This is a bandit sign. They don't cost much, they don't look like much, but they sure make real estate investors a whole lot of money if you use them right. So I'm gonna show you how to use bandit signs the right way without overworking yourself, without overspending, and without getting burned by the sign police. But before I do, make sure that you click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell because I post cool stuff like this each and every week and you don't wanna miss it. All right, let's do it. This bandit sign is a low cost guerrilla marketing lead generation strategy. And I'm gonna give you the tips, the tricks, the hacks that stems from 15 years of my experience so you can be effective with them right away without making all of the same mistakes that I did. Kind of how it works around here. I, I'm noticing that I go out, I make all the mistakes so you don't have to and I'd rather have it that way. So. If you use bandit signs wrong, you're going to burn a lot of calories. I don't know, which might be a good thing, who knows. You're gonna waste a lot of money though, you're gonna waste a lot of time, and you're likely gonna get fined by the sign police because the use of this guerrilla marketing strategy, it's really frowned upon by most communities if they don't downright violate city ordinances. I mean, they might, maybe even the law. You'll have to check with your area and use your best judgment. But when you get this part right, you can generate a low cost, steady stream of deal flow into your real estate investing business and, and whatever challenges or fines that you may experience can all just be chalked up to a very low cost of doing business. As an example, this is Daniel. He's a private REI ACE client of mine who, who gets so much business from Bandit Signs, he has made it one of his primary forms of lead generation. He's currently putting out like 800 signs a month. I mean, he's all in and his paydays are big and frequent too. Okay, so as you can see, it's a pretty simple sign, a simple concept. It's what's called guerrilla marketing. It takes a very simple message. You don't have a lot of room on there anyway. And I recommend using your name and a local phone number. Make sure it's a call capture phone number, like the numbers that we use in REI Black Book. And then a white and blue signs or, or white with a blue writing or a yellow with a black writing. Uh, those combinations work best. You know, bandit signs are one of the best ways to market for sellers and buyers and other investors and tenants and rent to own buyers. It's the lowest cost per lead strategy, historically speaking. It is labor intensive. It takes more time than money because it, it, it doesn't take a lot of money with the cost being about a dollar each. I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna go through a lot of signs as they get taken down sometimes as, as fast as you can put them up, but they work. So I've got three points around bandit signs that I'm gonna share with you that will one, show you where to get them and what you should be getting. And two, gonna show you how to use them to generate maximum deal flow. And three, how to avoid the sign police so you can continue using this time-honored deal generating method. Okay, number one, where do you get them and what should you get? Well, I prefer to not overthink this part. I go to dirtcheapsigns.com. There are countless places though to buy bandit signs and if you conduct enough Google searches, you could probably save a penny here and there if you did enough research and shopping. But regardless of where you buy them, you're looking at about a buck a piece. As of the recording of this video, dirtcheapsigns.com, that's the cheapest place that I know of. But it seems like there's a new one, they pop up all the time and to, to where you can save a few more cents per sign if you want. I suppose if you're putting up thousands and thousands of signs, it does eventually add up. But I'd really rather not delay in just getting them out just to, to save a, few cents per sign. As just one deal is gonna pay for your signs for the whole year and maybe even longer. So don't trip over the dollars to pick up the nickels. At least that's how I look at it. The most likely places that you'll be posting these signs are either in the ground, to a fence, or to a sign, or to a telephone pole. So you'll need to get uh, some H stands or some wood stakes, zip ties, and if you still have wooden telephone poles in your area, you're gonna want one of these. This is a hammer stapler. And you can get all this stuff at Amazon or Home Depot. And my personal favorite tool, a sign stapler. I'll go ahead and I'll give this guy a free shout at signstapler.com. I've got no affiliation, just a hell of a tool. And if you're gonna use bandit signs for your marketing, it's a huge convenience and a time saver. Now, how to use them to generate maximum deal flow. If you do this right, they work really well in making the phone ring with motivated sellers, motivated buyers and investors and tenants. There's just something about the organic nature of a bandit signs message that generates a motivated call. And as real estate investors, that's what we're looking for, motivation, because it's the foundation of all real deals. So you'll wanna map out your area and identify the sweet spots, like freeway on-ramps that have traffic lights or high traffic intersections, big stores like, like Costco and Home Depot and Walmart, Target, Lowe's, and, and understand that this is a numbers game. The more you put out, the more calls you're gonna get. But there is some strategy to it. 
or I'd actually say there's some common sense to it. Place them where people will actually have to stop their cars, where people will actually see them. I, I see this bonehead move all the time and I just shake my head every time I see it. You know, investors will, will put their signs up where cars are whizzing by or they'll put them on the wrong side of the intersection to where you can't see the phone number when you're actually stopped at the intersection. And by the time you do see it, you're on your way driving by with, with no time to write it down. Don't do that. It, it sounds like common sense, but now that I told you, you're gonna see it all the time. They must be students of that, that other guy's program down the street, I don't know. But uh, like I said, it's a numbers game. The amount of calls that you receive are gonna be in direct proportion to the number of signs that you put up. So you can put them up all at once, just in massive quantities, and you can do that every single day, or you can, what's really popular is just doing it on the weekends, or you can pay someone to do it for you, which I recommend. Or what I like to do is I just carry them around in the trunk of my car and I just put up a few every day as I go on about my regular business. What I'm doing, I'm just kind of leveraging my other activities. And just if I got a moment, I see a place, I put a sign in and go on about my business. Now your typical target market will be motivated sellers. Although bandit signs work great for buyers, work for tenants too. So make sure that you use a short, simple message that resonates with who you're marketing for, who you're looking for. You don't have a lot of room anyway, so you have to get to the point. Matt buys houses fast cash. Fast equals what your ideal seller wants, cash too. And even if you don't have the cash, if you negotiate a good deal, you'll have no problem using someone else's cash. So just play your target market's favorite radio station, W-I-I-F-M, with them. What's in it for me? Tune into their frequency and they will call you. Now, third thing, avoiding the sign police. For me, it's just a cost of doing business. I mean, if you're freaked out about potential interaction with authority, don't do it. All right, there are plenty of other lead generation strategies that you can do. It's just that this is a really good one. So tips for avoiding the sign police. One, do it in the middle of the night. I've done my share of midnight runs and it cuts down the sign placement time in half as, as well. There, there's no traffic, you get to park wherever you want, there's no city workers and, and the police at night, they've just got more important things to do. Now while you're putting up your signs, there's number two, don't act all suspicious. Act like you know what you're doing, like you're supposed to be there and do it with intention. I mean, don't be looking over your shoulder, looking all skittish, don't be scared and don't act like a criminal. If you see a cop, I, I just wave. I mean, they don't care as much as you think they do. And it's really a complaint driven situation anyway. So be respectful with regard to where you hang them, not on people's personal property. That's a good idea not to do that. Further, they cannot find you until they find you. This is number three. And so that's an ancillary benefit of using a call capture phone number or, or use a forwarding phone number. Google Voice, free. And use different phone numbers. Only city code enforcement can find you. The cops, they don't really care. Shopping centers can be a great place, but, but keep in mind it's private property there. So you've got mall cops to deal with or maybe maintenance workers to be concerned with, but not a big concern. Also, the nicer the area, the faster those signs tend to come down and, and the more complaints you're gonna get. You know, and so if, if someone approaches you, just avoid confrontation, be respectful and apologize if necessary, ask for forgiveness and just kind of move on. Pretty straightforward. It's certainly not rocket science. So every time you put a sign up, you're gonna score it on your daily navigator scorecard like this. Every sign, check a box. For every sign, check a box. Okay, can you do this? You can, right? So when are you gonna begin? Well, below you're gonna see a link to the Daily Deal Navigator Scorecard with all of the other essential money-making activities listed. You can download a copy there. As well, you're gonna see a link to the next money-making action for you to take. Alrighty, God bless to your success with the Daily Deal Navigator Scorecard. Your success is guaranteed. Now, go make it rain. And just before you do, share with me below. How will you use what you learned here today for maximum impact? And who do you know that might also find this video valuable? When their name comes to mind, please share it with them. I'd be grateful. I'll see you next time.